Hello, in this video we're going to take a model from Inventor and put it into GibbsCam. For this example we're going to be using the wheel that we've made previously. First thing we need to do is save the wheel out of Inventor. So I'm going to go to the I in Inventor, Export, CAD Format, and we're going to save this as an SAT file. Okay. So down here, .sat, and let's call this wheel 2, being I see I have another one there already. And I'm saving it to my data drive, but I could you could also save it to your own account. Okay, so we'll save that. So now that it's saved, we can get out of Inventor and go into GibbsCam. In GibbsCam, File, Open, and we'll, na we'll navigate to the data drive. Uh, so over here, there we go, Data. And we see we can't see the wheel right now. In order to see it, we need to switch over to a SATA file. So we can open this little drop down and pick SAT. And there we go, there's wheel one. I'm not sure what that file is. And then there's wheel two. So I click on that, open, and several windows are going to come up. Just OK. OK. And OK. So you can see here's my wheel. It's very important to note that the x, y, 0 is in the center. We also want to rotate it and see if it's on the top or bottom. And in this case, we can see that z0, which is that plus moving up and down, is on the bottom. And that's really important when we're drawing our tool paths up. OK. So over on our side menu here, we've got several different features. The first one that we're going to use is the tools. I click on tools, and that brings up a bar on this side. By double clicking on the bar, that brings up my tool menu. Now, I can't cut this 2 inch wheel out with a 1 inch bit. So we're going to use a 3 16 bit. I can simply type 3 over 16, and that updates. And you can see that we've got a preview there. So that's good. I can close this window, and there's my 3 16 bit. The next thing is we'll open the tool path, and you'll see that it brings up several options for the tool path and two more of those charts. So I'm just going to move this down to the side. Now, I've got this open, but I've got no geometry to work from. So I'm going to turn on the profiler. That's right here. Click on the profiler, and if you see, as I move this, it's taking geometry from the model. So I have that green line that's coming around. If I move the profiler down to different levels, now you only see green lines represented by the level being cut. So let's put that there. We're going to start off with a roughing toolpath. So we put rough in here, drag it over to this menu, and we're going to drag our bit down to rough, because that's the bit we're going to use. That opens a dialog box. Now some very important things in this dialog box. First thing, this is our clearance plane, so the mount that the tool will move above the stock. It's important that this number is higher than the top surface. So in, in our case, our wheel is half inch thick. So I'm going to move this to 0.6. And by doing that, we don't risk the bit coming and cutting across the material. So that's good. Now this one, my top of stock is 0.5, the bottom is 0. Well, I want to cut out these pockets. And I don't want to go all the way through. So being the bottom of my part is 0, top is 5, let's go halfway through, which would be 0.25. If my top of stock was 0, I would be entering negative numbers here. So let's select the profiles we want to cut. I hold the control key, and I can select multiple, like so. And we're not really worried about speed. Our machine's not capable of changing that. Um, it tracks. Everything here looks pretty good. So I come down to this box and I click do it. And you can see some orange lines showed up on my model. Those orange lines are the tool path. So if I click over here on the this cut part render, and we'll minimize that for now, and hit play, you can see that it cuts out that shape that I selected. So let's close that now that we know it works. And we're done with this tool. So let's take it and trash it. Now the next thing we need to do is that contour around the outside. And we've got a tool here called Contour. So we drag Contour over, and we drag the bit down into Contour. 
I select that outside contour. Now we want to go counterclockwise. If we're cutting an inside circle and we're keeping the outside part of the circle, we cut clock clockwise. If we're cutting the outside of a wheel or something that we want smooth, we're going to cut counterclockwise. So make sure that that's selected. Next thing is we want to go all the way through on this. So let's set this to 0.5, sorry, not 0.5, 0. 0 is the bottom of our stock, so now we set it to 0. And the other issue here is our desired cut is going to cut this in one pass. So that's a half inch cut on a 3 16 bit. Not the best of ideas. And I'm going to change my desire to 0.25, and that changes it to two passes. The other thing that you need to know now is our lead in and lead out. Those help smooth out the cut, but sometimes aren't very good, and I'll show you that in a second. So I've got this all set up. Let's click do it. And you can see my cut. Now, down here, this is my lead in and lead out. If you're trying to save material or you're cutting stuff on a tight path, we can change those by changing these numbers. So we could make this smaller. And then we can go redo. And you can see now we've got a smaller lead in and lead out. Or you can make both these numbers zero, and that would work as well. Okay, let's go back to the cut render. And you can see, there we go, we're cutting everything out. So for most of the wheels in class, that's going to be that. But for the case of this video, I'm going to show one more part, how to drill a hole. Now, we can't use contour, so let's get rid of contour. And I don't want to use this bit, so we'll get a new bit. Double click here. And instead of the 3 16 bit, let's switch to a 1 8 bit. Something a bit smaller just for the sake of being different. We don't need to change anything else. 1 8 is fine. We'll close that. Now you see we have two bits here. We've got the holes machining. So we'll take holes. We put that down there. We take our new bit. We put that there. And we select that profile in the middle. Now I've got our clearance plane has stayed the same. And we're going to, st our stock has stayed the same. So we have half inch stock. Zero is the bottom. I'm just going to change this to retract to R. And that should fix everything. We click do it. And you can see we've got a tool path in the middle. Back to cut render. And there's our hole. Good. So let's close that. We can close this now. We can close this. The last step is to post this file for working on the machine. So right here, I've got the post command. I click on post. And I'm going to click on post file up here. I need to navigate and find my post file. And in the case of our class, we're going to put that on the shared drive. Let's go computer. Apparently, I don't have access to the shared drive. OK, I've loaded the post processor on the flash drive. So let's just navigate and find that. Normally, this would be in the shared folder. But there we go, Mach 3 router. Open. And then we're going to go post here and save the file. Now, this is the file that goes to the CNC machine. So I've got it wheel two here. Let's just adjust this to the data or your flash drive and make sure you name it properly so we can find it. So let's say Burroughs underscore wheel, like that. And save. Now, this isn't finished yet. We still need to click process. There we go. Done close this window, and now the file is ready to go from the computer to the CNC machine.